Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to my office. It's nice and warm and cozy in here. Um, I just wanted to take a second and talk about unbricking Terminator X, Terminator X Max ECUs. I was actually on a forum last night and some people had some issues and I said, I've done this before. I know how to do this. So I figured I'd share my wealthy knowledge to all my followers and anybody else on the internet that's uh, trying to figure out how to unbrick their ECU. So uh, first of all, I will tell you the why and how because I'm sure if you are looking this up right now, you're probably freaking out and losing your mind and thinking you're gonna have to buy another $1,500 system because you've broken your ECU. This, uh, this way has worked for me several times, so I won't take up too much time because I know you're probably wanting to fast forward to the good stuff. Anyways, so how it happened. I purchased the Holly 5-inch display for my Terminator X because I wanted a bigger display. When I plug it, plugged it into my Terminator X, what happened was it was it was in need of an update so my terminator x was a v2 build 80 and the screen didn't like that very much it wanted the newer version to for everything to work fine no problem so it says update all right so the um five inch display comes with preloaded with sniper efi not terminator x efi big difference and what happened was it uploaded the sniper efi into my terminator x which it will do no problem it's holly compatible software but my car wouldn't run properly after. Couldn't figure out what was going on, decided, okay, I'm gonna revert back to my old software, all that jibber jabber. So I put all that software, I went on, got the V3 build on the internet, put that on the SD card, put it in the five inch display, something happened somewhere along the way, and the five inch display didn't read the SD card and completely uploaded nothing into my ECU. So the ECU's blank, it's bricked, I have zero communication with it. Try plugging the computer into it, didn't work. My five inch display wouldn't communicate with it. Plugged in my 3.5, wouldn't do anything. So naturally went on the internet, trying to figure out how do I fix this? You know, what's going on? And uh, they said, well, if you still got your 3.5 inch display, go on the internet, upload the original software onto the SD card, pop it in there, do the software update, boom, you're good. Didn't work. So after a long time of researching, what I found was there is a way to do it. Now, I'll tell you that right now. This is the how. It's real easy, real simple, um, and I'll try and make it as least complicated as possible and um, go through it step by step. Hopefully, you guys can see everything I got set up here in my TV in the office. So, let's dive right into it. Right off the bat, you need to go to the Holly website. You go to the support page. You go to fuel injection. You go to Terminator X, and right here, the original software that came in my Terminator X was the V2. So I downloaded the Terminator X V2 SD card software, which includes V2 build 80 firmware. Once that's downloaded, goes to the little corner, download, then you got to unzip it. So normally what I do is I go to uh, unzip files online. It's real easy, real simple. All you do is go online, type in unzip files online in Google, pick the first one, any of them work upload the file to this, it unzips it for you, it saves it into a different folder, you're golden. Next, you'll get the file, I think the Terminator X is called this one, this is the one right here. Now what you're supposed to do is transfer the entire file over to the SD card, and you really have to use your 3.5 inch display that comes with your, um, your, your Terminator because I found that the uh, five inch display just wouldn't work. I tried and tried and tried and then some people said you have to use a 3.5. So anyways, the 3.5 inch display is um, What you're supposed to do is upload the whole Holly file onto an SD card punch that near 3.5 go through your 3.5 and then Hit the update and then it'll update your firmware and boom. You're happy didn't did, didn't work for me and if it didn't work for you this sucks, but anyways getting to that so you open this up and then here you have you know you're supposed to do the whole file but uh, what I learned is instead of doing the entire file all you do is these two files so you have the SNEFI which is a dot EEP file and then you have the other one which is T uh, TSL CD 3.35 which is your 3.5 screen and then that's a dot FMU file instead of uploading everything just put these two files directly on an SD card and pop that into your 3.5 inch display 
It's happened. It's worked for me many occasions. I don't know how I brick my ECU so much, but it works phenomenally. As soon as you punch these two files into an SD card and nothing else, as soon as you turn on the key, the 3.5 inch display goes into boot mode as it always does, but it stays in boot mode and it does the update right then and there instead of you having to go into the controller and do the update. After that, you'll have communication with your ECU. Like I said, works every time, really happy. Problem is now the ECU is wiped. You have communication with it, but there's nothing in it. So before you do anything, you have to go through at least one wizard to give it some kind of parameters to work with. After that, you can either leave it as is and start driving your car again, let it self-learn, or you can punch in your laptop, update the firmware to what you had it before, and then maybe upload a tune or do whatever you want. But this is basically how I unbricked my ECU and it works every time, not 95% of the time, every time. Hopefully it'll work for you guys. So yeah, I just figured I'd share this little knowledge and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but uh, best of luck. Thank uh you. -huh.